Alright well, guys, Tactical Bear back again today, hopefully enjoying your Sunday so far, and today we want to talk about the Call of Duty World Championship that's coming out the latter half of this year. It's going to be in August, but as yet we do not know whether it's going to be online or online. All of the home series for the rest of the season are going to be online, but will they put champs back to LAN? That is a question that is in the air right now that we have no official confirmation on. There are some conflicting opinions throughout the community that I'll go into in the coming minutes here, and I'm of course intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. So like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. So this got announced a couple of weeks ago that we talked about. The prize pool for this year, 4.6 million total at the playoffs. Technically, they're calling it playoffs, not champs. And this season, it's a bit different, right? Because you don't have like the stage, like the stage one, stage two playoffs, and then champs overall with then the amateur teams coming in. It's kind of all combined into one. Playoffs is champs and vice versa. But they're probably not going to be calling it champs. I don't know. It just feels right to still call it champs. But, um, and of course, especially so given the prize pool, right? So 2 million for the first 4.6 million overall the call of duty championship tournament okay technically they are calling it the championship still so that's a good sign will take place in august 2020 more details will be announced soon so this came out a couple of weeks ago and um this is kind of where we are left in the dry but we have no reason or we have no um ability to know right now whether it's going to be online or on land which of course is the key question right because all of the home series will go through here in just a second are going to be online still the minnesota one coming up next weekend four more after that and then we get an august time the world championship now is this going to be done on LAN? i imagine there's a decent chance they will be able to do so given that things seem to be ramping down a little bit with the whole pandemic situation it's probably possible that by august at least it should be feasible to have all the players fly to a centralized location and play without any spectators there that's what they did at im Katowice earlier this year when it really started to kick off right at the late of february or i think it was like 29th of february or something they played in the spodek arena with no crowd at all but much better, right, than um, than doing it online. Because online, you don't get the fans watching anyway. So LAN without spectators is probably a, a decent compromise, I suppose, with the situation right now. If it's superb and, like, everything gets really better really quickly, which I kind of doubt it's going to happen, but who knows? Um, you know, maybe all the spectators can actually funnel into the event. We'll have to see uh, what it works out for on the CDL side. But a couple of clips to share with you guys with con conflicting opinions on how this is potentially going to go down. So firstly, I'll share this clip from Celium. I forget who pointed this out to me, so apologies for that. But if it was you, leave it in the comment section below. Because, um, yeah, really good clip here from Celium on Priester's stream saying that he thinks it will be online and they will continue as currently planned, which would be pretty disastrous, to be honest, having a $4.6 million tournament online. Um, and then there's a clip from the Huntsman pre-show of the Seattle home series where Hector and Big Timer in general are talking about the fact that they think even worst case scenario or at least Hector thinks it's going to be on LAN. Yo, is Champs online or are they having all the pros go to one central location? Uh, I'm not sure yet, but it's probably, I don't know. I don't have like any like, nope. that because they haven't announced it yet. But it's probably going to be online, it's like staying like this, you know? Enough training. Oh, that's kind of I thought the they you, they'll you. just fly you out, just pros only. All right, yeah. so they just announced and they released the very important bracket system and tournament uh, structure for the world champs. champs. As of right now, it's still undecided on whether or not we're going to be able to do this as a live event. Best case scenario, yes. Worst case scenario, it'll be a live LAN event. No spectators. No spectators, except for me. That's worst case scenario. Like for sure, they're gonna have it. You have to. You can't. Yeah, you can't I, do that. I agree. With that. Look, yeah. You, yeah, I, they have to. They have to. They have to. Yeah, you can't do that online. That's too, they, they, I'm gonna tell you how much is there. Four point two million dollars total, big timer. I'm not putting that on Spectrum, bro. There's no, no chance. No, Absolutely no chance. no chance. I'm not putting that on Grande Communications out of the headquarters. Maybe I am. So this is what the rest of the season looks like. The Minnesota Rocker Home Series 5 through the 7th with these teams you can see on screen. Then two weeks after that, the Paris Legion Home Series at this part of June towards the end of it. And then we get the last three, I'm pretty sure, all back to back. So the New York Home Series 10th to 12th of July. Then a week later, the London Royal Ravens Home Series. A week after that, the Toronto Ultra Home Series. So really exciting end to the season we have coming up. But then in the next month, in August, it's supposedly the World Championships is going to be there. Typically it's been around this time i was thinking that maybe they might even consider delaying it to september if that means that they can have it on land if there's restrictions in place or whatever 
in August time and it's possible to do something online in September, that would definitely make sense, right? Because it eliminates all of the online question that we've had this entire season long since it went online. Several tournaments now we've gone through the online period and it's like, okay, does this count as an event? All these questions that come into play, not really a, discuss a topic that's uh, discussed much more nowadays, but we saw Octane discussing when this whole thing came around, he was like, well, if champs is online, I guess it does count as champs, technically. Um, so, you know, big conflicting opinions. Then again, when we look at champs, like all this money on the line it just seems that you can't really excuse this being online if at all possible um too many questions come up as a result of it on land the production value can be much better you can see the players themselves right there even if there isn't a crowd as per se so you know obviously that's the ideal case and i think it is possible to have that happen but you know who knows what the future holds it's been a very unpredictable year so far something may may change dramatically in the coming months so nothing that really can be predicted right now but I'm expecting something to come out from the CDL in the coming weeks on this. So this is what it would look like right now. If the seedings were set as per post the Seattle home series, this is what it looks like. So Chicago and Atlanta all the way up here. What I find kind of interesting about this format is in previous seasons, you can win the world championship, but not necessarily be the best team for the season. So, you know, World War II, Evil Geniuses won the world championship, but they certainly weren't the best team of the season. Team Caliber, Rise Nation. Whereas this season, given that the whole, all the home series stuff contribute to where your, uh, where your seeding is at the playoffs, it's actually quite likely that the team that wins this, say it is one of these, you know, one of the top three, being the Huntsman Atlanta Phase Dallas Empire, they all have great seedings right now because of how they have done so far this season. So it makes it pretty likely that the team that wins this can be considered the best team in the entire season, right? Because right now, if any of Huntsman, FaZe, and Dallas Empire were to win, they would be considered the best team for the entire season and the World Championship winner, which is kind of a nice parallel to have, right? Because in the past, you can win the World Championships, but you look back at the season and it's like, well, they probably weren't the best team. They were just the best team on the day at the World Championship, which of course counts for a lot. But, you know, you can't look back on World War II and say that EG, you know, wrapped up that year. You know, they were the winners of that year because really it was Rise Nation Team Caliber that were the winners of that year but they just happen to win the world championship. So it's kind of nice to have that parallel. Then again, a team like Gorillas could technically win eight series and win the world championship. And at which point we get a similar situation, right? But you know, there's positives and negatives to this format, but I was just thinking that maybe that's somewhat of a positive, right? That you can look back on previous seasons and say that, okay, whichever team wins it, they probably just, you know, won the season overall and we don't have to have too many other conversations about it. So let's look through the championships that we've had in the past. Thought this was interesting to look back on, especially given that all these world championships have have had a lot of prize pool on the line but they've all been on land right and it means that there's less questions regarding the game and the inconsistency and all this kind of stuff when there's this much money on the line and you know to be fair there's a lot of money on the line already right now at these home series 50 grand i think to the winners um you know 20 grand to second place 10 grand to third and fourth place i think is the current prize pool that they're working on for the current home series but you look at the world championships and there's always been a lot more right and in a situation like that if there's any way we can possibly do it on LAN, that's the way to do it, right? And then we get a proper conclusion to the season and all these other past home series that have gone down online. Honestly, a lot of the results to these home series have been pretty expected, apart from the one that Florida won. And even the one that Florida won at the Dallas home series, it was Florida and Minnesota in the grand finals. And both those teams had made grand finals before on LAN. And then since then, it's been FaZe, um, Dallas Empire, and uh, the Chicago Huntsman that have won, teams that already won when we were on LAN, right? So honestly, the inconsistency factor of online isn't as big as maybe some people would expect but you know then again you go into a LAN environment that question completely goes out the window and probably the production value gets stepped up to another degree because the actual production facility and all the staffing can actually be there at the event so a little trip down memory lane here, looking at the rosters that have won in the past. Karma, Killer, Miracles and Parasite, of course, winning in the Black Ops 2 World Championships, a million dollar prize pool. As I talked about yesterday in the Nature video, champs used to be much earlier in the year, like March time to kind of advertise the DLC. So Call of Duty goes to another million dollar championship. Complexity win this one. Karma goes back to back. Team Envy really, um, you know, another second place here. Pretty much they solidified themselves when they won the World Championship in Black Ops 3 as the best World Championship team ever. They have the highest average placing. They have the highest um, prize money earned. And I wonder whether that will transfer over to the new Dallas Empire squad in some respect at least. Of course, their players of a time have switched up very dramatically but always seem to get a good result at the world championship so another million dollar tournament here then advanced warfare a similar fashion denial win this one as we discussed yesterday you know jake have actually talked yesterday on twitter how they wish they didn't win the world championship under denial just because of all the bad rep that organization had came back in black ops 4 
And it was a bit of a shambles, right? So shame that that really, uh, the whole situation went down. Red ended up finishing third as we talked about that Face Red versus Opta Gaming match yesterday when they pulled out the HBR and all of that. Another million dollar championship here. Then Black Ops 3, they stepped it up to two million. This was COD XP technically at the end of the season. Pretty incredible event. Splice and Fabi from Europe making it to top four. Remarkable stuff. Of course, like Game 5, Round 11, Cloud9 versus Opta Gaming, which I'm sure a lot of you guys aren't too happy that I brought up. But, you know, it has to be said regarding the whole tournament as a whole. Um, then Team Envy win it, of course, finally getting their World Championship one under their belt. Then Infinite Warfare, they stepped it down to only one and a half million dollars. Pathetic price pool, to be honest, especially when we look at the $4.6 million of today, which is just absolutely outrageous. Opta Gaming finally get the job done, beating Team Envy in the Grand Finals here. Incredible tournament, quite frankly. Clayster once again at falling short. And then World War II, as I was discussing earlier, Team Caliber came second place here. They won the opening couple of events of the season at Dallas and NOLA, that's New Orleans. But then later in the season, they kind of fell off a little bit. Theory was removed from the team. They eventually brought in Ferro and Enable to the squad because uh, Chino was on the team earlier on. But Rise Nation dominated the middle season with the Gunless team, TJ, Looney, um, you know, Methods earlier on at Atlanta. And then they swapped him out for Slasher for the events they won at Seattle and Anaheim. But then the end of the season, they had a really poor result. They lost the game five round level fashion in the reverse sweep to Luminosity Gaming where Slack clutched the 1v2. They ended up finishing top 6. TK make it to the grand finals but Evil Geniuses actually win it. Aix getting his second world championship. Same with Apathy and Assault and Silly getting their first one. So remarkable story to be honest but as I said you know this isn't they, they won't go down as the team that dominated the season whereas when we look at a team like Opta Gaming winning the world championships yes they were the dominant force that season. You know Envy not necessarily a similar thing. Optic dominated most of it but you know it's always an interesting thing to look back on the world championships who maybe had the clutch factor when it mattered compared to who was the best team over the course of the season so then black ops 4 E United get the job done. Clayster finally wins his one again since the Advanced Warfare days. Optic come third, 100 Thieves in second place. A lot of familiar names. Uh, Kenny and Enable with the back-to-back -back World Championship Grand Final. So we'll have to see if that carries over at all this year. Doesn't even look like right now we're going to get Enable in the Grand Finals because he's not even on the starting lineup, which is kind of sad to see. Maybe OGLA will turn it around for Kenny. Same with the 1.35 KD. Just, uh, just very standard stuff. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like if you did, subscribe if you're new as always. Leave your thoughts down below. Intrig to hear your perspective on whether it's going to be online, whether it's going to be on LAN, of course, what you would prefer to see, but what you think the likelihood really is. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. I'll see you next time.